Hey everybody! Are you looking for simple and easy gift ideas or maybe to make some personalized serving boards or charcuterie boards at home? Well then stick with us. We're going to make this beautiful round serving platter that we put together today with an easy vinyl inlay that you can do at home. It's quick, it's easy, it's inexpensive, it's custom, and most of all it's fun. So stick with us as we resin together. Welcome back. So we're working on our serving board that we're going to put the inlay in. So the first thing we need to do is uh, mix up our colors and pour a color layer. Now it's not going to fill up the mold. We don't want to do that. Uh, we want to fill it about halfway and then we're going to put our vinyl on once that cures and then we'll give it a top coat uh, for the other half in just clear to protect the vinyl and give it the strength that it needs to have. So for today's uh, project I chose uh, the uh, black diamond emerald green uh, pigment uh, I think that'll look real pretty and then with that the uh, black diamond pure pearl white uh, the green and white combination I think uh, that's pretty and green is one of my favorite colors so we'll go with that uh, today and so let me mix up the colors I'll show you how much pigment I'm gonna put in and then I will mix everything up so one popsicle stick two that should be good and then for the pure pearl white same thing a little bit more there we go all right so here we go i'm going to mix these up and i will be right back okay so we're all mixed up and ready to go i should mention that we are using the premium uh, epoxy resin from the epoxy resin store uh, for our resin today and I have mixed up eight ounces uh, divided that into two cups of four ounces each so just make sure I cover that because sometimes I forget to tell y'all how much uh, how much I use and so okay so we're gonna do very simple uh, method on this one nothing too complex um, this is kind of uh, letting the resin do what it wants to do letting it cure as we know resin cures from the outside in so we're just going to pour in a marbly pattern a marble like pattern if you want to put it that way and then kind of mix things around a little bit and then let the resin cure the way it wants to cure and we'll see how that turns out so i'm going to start with my green and just gonna basically drizzle it into the handle about halfway and then make my pattern across. There we go. All right. So I'm not going to use it all. We'll come back and add a little more. But let's put some white in, some of the pearl. Now I will say, um, this pattern, like I said, is going to pearl, uh, pull and combine. Now if you want it to not do that as much, if you want to stay it, or have it stay in the uh, pattern that you pour it, or as you're about to see, the way we push the colors around, uh, then let your resin set up a little bit before you pour it, and it won't move around quite so much. Uh, it really depends on what you want it to look like. I'm going for more of a, a marbled look. So I'm pouring it while it's still pretty runny and not starting to set up. But like I said, if you want a different look, then by all means, uh, pour your resin when it gets thicker and you will uh, definitely achieve that look. All right, there we go. That is our resin. So we'll pull that out, get rid of our pouring cup. Now what I can do? is I take just a little toothpick or a uh, food pick if you want to call it that and I kind of just start swirling back and forth 
There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's however you want to do it. Now, like I said, the uh, patterns we're making, if we had poured our resin when it was thick, then we'll pretty much stay like this. If we let it uh, pour it while it's still pretty liquidy like I've done, then these patterns aren't going to stay. The big thing is I just want to move the color around so that as it begins to pull and transform, it has all the different colors mixed together. There we go. Okay, don't want to mix too much because we want to keep those colors separate. But for right now, we'll stop there. Now, if you see right here along the edges, it's already starting to pull. Right here, these colors are starting to combine and pull and it will continue to do that. Let me push it forward, see if you can get a little bit better picture. But you can see it's starting to pull around the edges and we're gonna let that uh, continue to do that. Let me clean up my mess. I never knew how messy I was till I started doing resin and then I realized just how messy things can get. Okay, so I'm gonna take the heat gun to it just to get rid of these bubbles. Nothing really fancy to see, not about trying to swirl the colors or anything. Uh, I will take the heat gun to it and then we will come back when this is set up. Now we're going to let it set up until it's gotten uh, firm. Still a little bit tacky but firm because we want it to be firm enough that we can use our smoothing tool, a little smoothing tool, to push down on the vinyl and get all those air bubbles out and make sure it adheres good. So you don't want to do it while it's still real, real soft. But you also don't want to wait till it's fully hardened or else your layers may not bond chemically together and it could delaminate. So make sure you wait for that. So we'll come back when we're ready to apply our, uh, our vinyl and we will continue. All right, everybody, we are back. We have our piece, it is cured. And then we have our uh, vinyl piece that we're gonna put inlaid. I didn't create part of the video uh, making this, but basically I just had a pattern on my uh, Cameo uh, Silhouette, Cameo 4, uh, that I've cut out. I've got it on my transfer tape, and so we're just going to transfer that over. Um, if you would like to see videos on how to do this, I'm more than happy to do it, but there's lots of people on YouTube doing stuff uh, with the vinyl, so I don't think uh, that is probably necessary. So we have this together. Now, I lost uh, track of time, had some things come up, so this had cured more than I want it to, so if you look, you, don't, you can tell, but... I, uh, it's kind of hazy on the surface because I took uh, some 220 grit sandpaper and just gave it a quick sand just to rough up the surface and then you just want to take a uh, lint free cloth and just kind of wipe up any dust. I've already cleaned it really well um, since it cured. So what we're doing is creating scratches for something for the resin to hold on to. Um, if it was still kind of soft and pliable, then we could just pour the resin and it would create a chemical bond between the two layers. But because we let it harden, I went ahead and scratched it so that there's lots of surface area for a mechanical bond between uh, the two layers of epoxy. Now we may have been okay just pouring it, but I didn't want to take any chances because I like my artwork to last. Uh, so I do that when it's cured. Now, if I could still get my fingernail into it, then I would say it was good for a chemical bond, but because it had hardened up pretty hard, we went ahead and sanded it for that. So just explaining what happened. So what I'm gonna do is peel off my transfer tape very slowly, because these little details like to not come along, like that one right there, the dot of the eye. <laughs> There we go. So just watch as you're peeling. You can always lay it back down and get something if it didn't come along. There we go. All right. Now I am treating this is the top, so I'm working upside down for me uh, so you guys can see it right side up. Now if I don't get this center, y'all don't make fun of me. There we go. All right. So then what I do is I take a scraping cool, 
working from the outside, just gonna get it pushed down to the center. Might have some little bubbles. The big thing is we want to get the pattern well adhered so it'll stick to the resin. Rotate this around. Because we want it to stick to the resin more than it sticks to our transfer tape. And then we'll There we go. All right, now the moment of truth. Just gonna start slowly pulling it away and praying that everything stays in place. There we go, all right. Love it when it works out right. So I'm just gonna gently go back over just to make sure nothing lifted up. I'm not pushing very hard. I just want to make sure like the corner of that star had lifted just a little. Those are all places that could uh, create an air bubble and we don't want that. So take your time. Look for any debris, anything like that, that you can get out. Sometimes little pieces of tape or plastic or something will be stuck. So there we go. All right, I think we're ready. So I have mixed up a uh, batch of the same premium resin from the epoxy resin store. Uh, this is eight ounces again. I think I mixed a little bit too much, but that's okay because I have a project that I want to work on. So. It has some air bubbles in it, so I'm just kind of going to pour very slowly. And work around, let it get full up. And we could pour it all in the center, but you know what? Let's help it out a little bit and get it to the edges. There we go. All right. I'm going to save that for a little project that I have to do. I'm experimenting with uh, using uh, resin to fill in uh, pieces of wood uh, to make designs. So I'm going to save that for that. There we go. All right. So we're going to let this cure overnight and uh, come back and see how it looks and uh, demold it. I'm going to Unmolded, I'm gonna take my heat gun and knock out some of these little bubbles that have come up, not a lot of bubbles. And uh, we'll be back just as soon as it's ready to come out of the mold. All right, everybody, welcome back. We have our piece, it is uh, cured overnight um, and looking really good. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Let's go ahead and pull it out of the mold. Now, up here at the handle, it kind of messed up. It, it poured over, I uh, accidentally slid it too close to the edge of my board and it actually dipped over the side and created a waterfall of resin off the board. Uh, so I have a, a nice, beautiful puddle of, pure, of cured resin on my work surface, uh, which is why I always recommend putting down a drop cloth. The ones I use have like a uh, rubber plastic kind of backing on them, so it keeps uh, accidents from that from being too bad. But all I'll do uh, later on, I'll take some snippers in a file and just file that down as you can see it just kind of made a, an area so i just need to clean up the edge but other than that it turned out good a few bubbles here and there but um, a razor knife will take that off when i cut and file this i got a sharp edge around the around it um, and that'll help take that off i just take a like a razor blade and just kind of 
very gently just shave it do this very carefully just like you were peeling an apple or something but just take that sharp edge off and that'll be just as good as new and it'll be perfect uh, so that was quick and easy a uh, beautiful piece that we can make customize it uh, this will make a great gift or a wedding present whatever you can think of or even for your own house but really simple and easy project that you can make at home with just a few tools uh, you can even use uh, vinyl stickers acetate stickers don't use paper because uh, that will soak up the resin and they'll discolor but um, I hope you'll try this at home and let us know what you think about it as always make sure that you're subscribing to the channel so you can see new videos as they come out and most of all I want to thank you for being with us as we resin together